Hello and welcome to I Helped Make That. Now that we are done with Happy Medicine Month, we are going to be talking about a much better comedian. I am, of course, talking about George Carlin and his short-lived sitcom, The George Carlin Show, with one of the writers of the show, Daryl Vickers, who actually had a previous relationship with George Carlin, so we'll focus on that as well. Thanks for coming on, Daryl. Oh, you're welcome. Hopefully I can be entertaining and somewhat informative. Yeah, but of course we have to get the anchor ad out of the way. So, if you want to create your own podcast, try Anchor today because Anchor is the easiest podcasting platform to use. All you do is sign up for an account, then you can post on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those platforms. So if you want to try to create your own podcast, try Anchor today. Thanks again, Daryl, for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, so... Tell me, how did your professional relationship with George Carlin start? Well, we were initially friends with his older brother, Pat. Uh, We had come down to L.A. to work on a show called Thick of the Night. And Pat was one of the researchers, and our desk was next to his. And at some point, we had quit the show and, and... I don't know whether to help us out or just what he wanted to get it done, but he had an idea for a series, I guess, or a pilot or a movie. Called, Pat was a huge uh, marijuana fan. And he had this idea called the Stonington's. And it involved a, uh, a cable access uh, studio, which turned out to be powered by an alien marijuana plant. So, George, I mean, Pat had never had any money, so he uh, got George uh, to pay for it. So we wrote this thing, and uh, at some point, we had, we had written, before we went to LA, we had written a pilot um, called Diplomatic Immunity, and somehow Pat had given this pilot to George. Uh, he was working on a, uh, a series of his own. It was going to be somewhat like a sitcom for HBO, and this was probably late 84. And it wasn't going well, and he was uh, he was working with Pat McCormick, and while Pat was a very, very funny uh, joke writer, he wasn't really a guy who was terrific on structure. So uh, Pat had given him this script, and he was on a plane flying to a performance somewhere, and he read our script. And we got a phone call, Uh, Andrew picked up the phone in our uh, crappy little apartment in uh, Van Nuys. And it was George Carlin calling from the plane saying he just read our sitcom and he really liked it. And he was having problems with his own sitcom pilot department 2C and would like us to help him uh, structure it and uh, write for it. So uh, we said yes. And uh, that's uh, basically uh, how we came to start working with George. Okay. And then. What happened afterwards? Well, we went down. George had, this was right after, I think, his last big heart attack. And uh, he was really taking care of himself at the time. And, you know, he'd been through a very, very dark, very long period of cocaine problems and things. But, I mean, the man I met was just uh, just a sweetheart guy. I mean, just smart and humble and uh, just welcoming And basically, Andrew and I, who were 26 or something, I think, at the time, uh, we were sitting around his office. They were literally writing the show was Andrew and myself and George. And we sat in this conference room and we kicked around ideas and wrote jokes. And it was a couple of young guys who just gotten off the plane from Oshawa with a comedy legend. Uh, I've said many times that I can't believe we just weren't catatonic. Uh, just being so awestruck by it. But we went in and we did the job and basically it was a couple of guys telling George, no, you need to put this over here. And I think if we ended with this bit, it would be, uh, it would be better. And uh, yeah, so we, uh, we finished the pilot 
and uh, we got offered another show and we were trying to decide between, we were waiting to see if HBO was going to pick the show up. And we, we had that and we had this other uh, show that was going to go a series and we reluctantly took the other show, which was lucky because HBO, for some reason, didn't pick up the pilot. So, uh, yeah, so we remained friends with George, uh, but we didn't work with him again for about 10 years. We, we did the Tonight Show uh, in between. And um, the next time we met up with him was on uh, the Warner Brothers lot. Yeah. And this leads to today's subject, the George Carlin show. So. When he hired you to write a couple of episodes for that show and helped uh, also punch up the writing for more episodes, uh, like, did he contact you directly or did his agent or how did you get hired for that show? Well, we were on an overall deal with Warner Brothers at the time and they were shooting the George Carlin show on the Warner lot. And I got a call one day from Sam Simon, who was running George's show. And I, I don't know why, but they, you know, they wanted a script and they asked us if we'd pitch a couple of ideas. And we said, sure. So um, we were actually doing our own pilot at the time. So it was kind of a very, very busy moment for us. But, you know, with the offer to work with George Carlin, you do it. So, so basically uh, in our few seconds of spare time we pounded out a few ideas we went in uh to george's uh well to sam's office which was just a few buildings away from our own and we you know we gave him a few ideas and he picked one which turned out to be uh one of the highlights i guess of the first season which is basically what happens is george decides he's getting too old and and set in his ways and decides to you know rekindle his youth and by that, he decides to boost a truck. So he steals a truck with his friend and they open it up. And the only thing in the back of the truck is a statue of Jesus. And then they have to figure out what to do with the statue. So, you know, it went really well. And uh, we got along with Sam. And um, then I got a call from either George. I think it was George, actually. Yeah, he called me and basically apologized for what they'd done to our episode. Now, looking back at it today, I, you know, it's amazing how much of the, the original script stayed in. But, uh, you know, these things go through a process during the week and things get cut and winnowed out and things like that. And uh, but I, what I would really like you to do, if it's possible, I'd love you to come and uh, help punch up the show. Uh, he was not getting along with the showrunner at the time, Sam Simon. Uh, Sam, you know, uh, was uh, had been on um, Taxi, and then he'd been on the very early years of Ch uh, Simpsons, and had a, a big reputation. But he was a bit, he could be difficult to work with at times. And George and he just didn't get along. And I think he just wanted, he felt the show could be funnier, and we'd work with him. You know, we'd had a very good relationship uh, ten years ago, so he basically brought us on. And actually, we weren't being paid anything because we were on an overall with Warner Brothers. So it was we were doing free work for him. But again, it's George Carlin. And, you know, he he picked us up uh, when we were a couple of young unemployed writers when we first started out in L.A. And uh, I figured it's the least we could do to to pay back that kindness. Uh, so we were more than happy to go in and. We were basically doing it evenings and, and uh, weekends because we were casting and writing and doing all kinds of things for our own upcoming series. And I think we wrote, uh, we punched up about four or five episodes and then our show started and we had to, we had to stop at that point. But uh, we did, I think, write the very first episode of the second season. We somehow find found time for that as well. Yeah. Now, what was the pilot that you were that that you were working on when you were working on the George Carlin show? It was called The Parenthood, and it was a uh, sitcom with Robert Townsend, and it was his kind of return to television after uh, he'd had a sketch show on Fox, which hadn't done very well, and it was basically just a family show. We'd been called in to do it. It was one of the very first four shows that the Warner Brothers Network did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it went 92 episodes. We only stayed for this first season because we were very unhappy working on the show. And 
Uh, we didn't get again like uh, like George with Sam. We didn't get along at all with Robert Townsend. So uh, it, you know, we left the show. Uh, it, I, I've said in uh, I'm writing my memoirs, and I said in my memoirs, if I'd have uh, if I'd have realized how awful working on the the show we were on, I would have gone over and offered to uh, to uh, nail our teeth to the uh, to Sam's parking lot space if he'd take us on and let us just write on that show because George's show was far more pleasant uh, time than uh, than what we had. Yeah. Now, just to, um, I hope I'm not opening any old wounds with this but just out of curiosity why why did you not really care for robert uh there were any number of reasons um i'll go with a couple uh we just had different philosophies of what was funny uh, was one um and he had absolutely no memory for uh for lines so we had a our writing is very line specific and i can remember one particular piece we had where robert would enter the kitchen and says uh what's the problem and his kid says the problem is zaria who is his daughter his zaria's soup so we start to say this is the beginning of the scene robert walks in and says what's wrong no, no, it's what's the problem? Walks in again. What's going on in here? No, no, it's 17 takes before we got him to say it correctly. It was just, we were, it was it was a, a crucible getting through that show. It was literally, professionally, the worst time of my life. I, I just hated that show so much that uh, I can remember the very last show uh, because it was shot in front of a live audience, we would be in a uh, control booth at the back. And as the show finished, I went down onto the set, and uh, I think the the cast were shooting uh, some promo shots on one side. And I went and stood in the living room of the set, realizing I'd never have to be there again. And it was just such a wonderful moment. I was just, it was like you know, if it was like crawling out of the ocean after a big storm, and just letting and uh, just just touching the water for one last time before you got to lay on that beach. Well, wow, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but back to the George Carlin show, when you were hired to do punch up. Now mm -hmm. you said you were never actually in the writer's room. That's something you told me personally. So how did that work? Did they like give you like the scripts already and then you had to decide like where to put in new jokes or like how how did that all come about yeah uh, you get the script uh, probably uh, a week or so in advance and uh we would just go home and i think we wrote most of the jokes separately andrew and i my partner uh because again we, it was just we our days were full so it was you know we went home to our families and uh we got to spend four minutes with them and then we'd be off into the computers uh writing jokes and yeah you you basically say you take the script and you'd be going through it and you'd see a place where you could put a line so you'd say page four q3 and then you put one or two or possibly three possible lines that might go there um and you know we we stuck mostly to george's stuff but we, we, we tried to make it as funny as possible. Um, you know, he had um, he had uh, a thing where he, you know, his he, he did a lot of jokes about his family, uh, members of his family not living very long. And he said if they'd have uh, one of the lines was if uh, they'd have made uh, a movie about uh, my life, it would have been uh, four funerals and a wedding. Yeah. Little jokes like that. Yeah. So then. You ended up being rehired to do season two, episode one. Yeah. So, and so did you do that after ha having punched up the other scripts or was it around yeah, the same Yeah, it was probably a number of months later. You know, again, I don't recall that well, but yeah, I think it, it may have even been after we'd finished our, uh, our show, uh, 
uh, somewhere in there, we found time when they had, Sam called up again and asked uh, to, and we said, sure, we would do the, you know, it was an honor working for George. I mean, you know, he was an icon and uh, as I say, just a great guy. I mean, I'd been invited to his house a number of times and, uh, you know, it's it just, just a, a warm, welcoming guy. And, uh, you know, there are very few comedians like that. Yeah, you know, they're, they are as, as a whole, a troubled bunch but George, you know, he'd been through his rough waters, but now was, you know, had returned. You know, he and his brother were just super nice guys and funny and smart guys. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Then, but with season two, episode one, did you, did they, uh, they kind of back off a bit more and let more of the script be in, be like the final product? Or was it about the same as with, the first script you wrote? I think the second script, actually, they rewrote it a little more than they did the first, because I don't think the ratings were very good uh, the first season. And the, the thing that networks tend to do is they meddle with the show. And if the show doesn't go well, they meddle some more, not realizing that what they're doing is probably the reason it's not very popular. And so I think, yeah, the, I can remember walking. Actually, I walked into... Uh, there was this weedy little executive at Warner Brothers. And I can remember walking into his office one day and he was on the phone with Fox and they were talking about Sam Simon and, and the George Carlin show. And uh, and this guy said, well, maybe if you and I gang up together, then we can uh, we can get our way over Sam. You know, it was a, it was a it was a difficult relationship on that show. Sam, can I swear on this thing? I don't know. Sure. Yeah. So basically, Sam had what people in the, the executives in the industry fear. He had fuck you money, which basically meant that, you know, he made something like $12 million a year off of The Simpsons because of his deal, even though he hadn't worked on The Simpsons in like a decade. So he didn't need the money. Uh, so there was no pressure if they offered to fire him. He didn't care because, you know, it wasn't like he was going to be out on the street. He had plenty of money. So he could say, I don't want to do that. Where, you know, most writers, they've got kids in private school and expensive houses and things. And, uh, you know, and a few residuals coming in. But, you know, you, you showrunners need to, to generate a lot of money. Sam didn't. So it was it was a difficult show that way for for the networks. And, of course, you also have the problem of Sam and George butting heads too. So it was, you know, the shows are never easy. And, and I think George's show, I, I think considering it's, it's a terrific little show. It's, you know, could it have been funnier if George have had more of the say? I think so. Uh, but, uh, you know, considering how much stress there is and uh, how much people try and meddle with shows, uh, I, I think it was, it was, you know, it was about his, days back in New York and uh, there was some good funny lines in that show. Yeah. I, yeah, I can see that. I guess to help prepare for this, I only saw the two episodes you wrote. I would have to say, I think I would have enjoyed the show more if I saw more episodes, got more into the characters, you know, got to know them a bit better. Y you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because, I mean, especially George's show, because it was kind of a neighborhood bar. So it was kind of a, you know, it was like a cheers kind of thing where you go in every week and there's these guys sitting around the bar and they've all got their own little personalities and their own little ways of getting laughs. Yeah. So if you're more familiar with who they are, you're looking forward to them saying that kind of typical line that that character does. Yeah. And if you any show, I think if you just watch one episode. You, you really don't get, you know, that's why they're series. So you get to kind of go along for the ride. I think you were able to verbalize sort of what my experience was like better than I could that I probably would, you know, have enjoyed this experience more if I was more familiar with the show because, you know, I would have known the characters and then I would have known, you know, wouldn't have been able to get more along with the ride I will just say that, you know, just watching these two episodes, I was just thinking that was okay. Yeah. Like, but like, uh, I, I don't know, I guess like 
Yeah, it was okay. It could have been a little funnier, especially with Carlin in the lead. Yeah, no, and then George felt that too. Yeah, but uh, the the amount of pressures you have, it's you you. I think people from the outside don't understand that you get you know as a showrunner you get pressure from above, you get pressure from below, uh, you've got pressure from uh, time constraints because you're writing one of these a week and you're writing not only are you doing the episodes you're producing, but you're writing first drafts of other episodes and you're you know casting and. Uh, the, the amount of work that goes into these things. And then you've got all the networks and the studios bitching and complaining uh, at the same time. So, and you're going to rehearsals and it's amazing that anything gets on and that's any good at all with the amount of problems you have with, with sitcoms. Yeah. And I think that is a perfect place to end it. Thank you, Daryl, so much for coming on to the show. Well, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Before we end, uh, is there anything you'd like to plug? Uh, no, I'm semi-retired. I just have, uh, you know, I just do little shows. Uh, if there's somebody out there who wants to hire me for a lot of money, please give uh, contact me. But uh, apart from that, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, playing with my record collection uh, in Toronto at the moment. All right. Well, that was I Help Make That, and I'll see you all later. Later.